Social interaction is a powerful element in human mental health. The relationships that we form with others play a large role in defining our personality, and it is believed that this ability to form strong social networks has been the single biggest force in the evolution of human intelligence. Psychiatric disorders are particularly damaging because they affect many of these critical elements of social interaction, such as behavior, emotion, and memory. Given the hugely significant impact of these disorders on society, and after many decades of searching for cures to neural diseases, it is perhaps surprising that in 2013 we are no closer to treating these disorders than we were half a century ago. In an age where the importance of mental health has taken on greater significance, there is a pressing need for new insights into how the brain develops and the processes that cause brain dysfunction. In order to design new therapies for any disease, we first need to understand how our body develops. See, from the moment we're born, the growth of proper body function is kind of like an intricate dance between our genes and our environment. This relationship is rather similar to the relationship between a car engine and its fuel. The engine is what defines the performance of the car, but no matter how good the engine, it needs the addition of fuel to make the car run. Similarly, while our genes define the basic properties of the human body, we need the right environmental experiences to drive proper cell and tissue growth. In early brain development, our sensory experiences are hugely important in providing a strong or weak foundation for all future learning, behavior, and health. Our brain cells or neurons function by forming intricate connections which are laid down at the early stages of development. These neurons communicate via electrical activity and form circuits that become the basic foundation of brain architecture. So to design new therapies, we need to understand the factors that drive how these connections are formed and why they become impaired in the disease state. Integrating the nanomedicine and neuropsychiatric genetics labs in Trinity College, Dublin, my research project involves the design and validation of a device that can model brain connections and probe specific questions about brain development. The device functions by forming an electrical interface between microelectrodes embedded within the glass and neurons that are patterned and grown on the device surface. This biochip enables researchers to directly record and stimulate the neurons and monitor the patterns of activity involved in early development of brain circuitry. So what we're attempting to do is to recreate the events of early neuron development in an effort to understand the processes and mechanisms that are involved in critical periods of brain maturity. Such a system could prove invaluable in providing a more powerful means of understanding how our brains develop and in doing so determine new targets for drug development in neuropsychiatric disorders.